Welcome back everyone. It's been a really, really long time since the square back's been facing outside of the garage and on all four wheels. So today's a very special day. On the last video, you saw me driving the square back and you can probably tell how happy I was based on my voice. But before I can actually officially drive this out on the road, there's a few things I need to do in order to make this just a little bit more reliable. I didn't feel it was necessary for me to do this on camera, so I kind of just did all this stuff on the side. But basically on that last video, or maybe it was on the last last video when I made this bracket, out of some picture frame material stuff but now i have the gauges actually mounted onto the bracket this gauge here comes with this bracket and you kind of just like bolt that down and it clamps onto that this gauge i drilled a hole for the wires to come through and basically what i did here is i just wired up both gauges in parallel the accessory cables i'm wiring them up together the um, constant positive again also together and the ground i have it right here and then everything else that goes to the engine is just going to go off to the side and into the back and these cables here i do need to cut into them and basically extend them and i have my gauges installed here and somewhat wired up so this is what it looks like when I have the accessory on. But I don't have them wired up to the engine yet. The harness for the gauges is run all underneath this dashboard, so you can't even really see it. I have it running above the steering column, above the stereo, and then over here, I considered putting it above this glove box thing, but I'm using this Harbor Freight bracket and I have it screwed into that bolt. And really, it's like, you can't even really see it. Technically, I could just paint this so it's a little bit more hidden, but I don't really care. Going down here onto the same bracket onto the fender bolt with a third bracket right there. So I want to run these cables all along the side here and putting them underneath the carpet. And then going through this gap, which leads it to underneath the rear seat. Once it's down here, originally I wanted to run the harness through the same hole as the starter cable but I don't think there's enough space in there. So I'm gonna have to figure something out. I know on the driver's side, that harness actually goes through the hole in the body on the side, and it goes in between the fender over to the rear and into the engine. And I kind of thought about doing that on this side, but there's no hole. So I would need to drill another hole down there. But I don't know if I really want to do that because even if I do have the cable going through and behind this fender, I don't even know how I'm gonna be able to put it from there to the engine unless I drill a couple more holes. So I'm thinking if I do need to drill some holes, I would prefer not to drill any part of the body. If anything, I would probably prefer to drill on the pan instead. So I'm gonna try to see if I can drill another hole next to this and go underneath the car and then drill another hole so that the wire can go through and into the engine bay that way. That's the hole where the starter cable comes out of. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole right next to that. All right, guys, this is really hard to record, but I'm doing this one-handed. So here we go. Whew, there we go. And uh, I decided to make it just a little bit bigger because I do wanna put a grommet before I just directly put the cable in there. Under the seat next to the original starter cable hole, I also drilled out this hole. So I should be able to just connect the harness from here through the hole underneath the car. Well, that was a little bit harder than expected. So I have this wire going through this hole and I had to kind of shimmy it through to go through the other hole in the body. That way I can use this, bend it over and use this to pull the cable through. That's what it looks like from the inside with that wire going through that hole there. So I should be able to just use this and pull the cable through. That way it's a little bit easier to fish it through those two holes. Man, this is such a big disappointment. You can see how late it got because I've been working on this for so long, but I finally finished extending my cables all the way to the back. And before I go through the trouble of 
wiring everything through the holes that I drilled and kind of wasting my time. Well, not really wasting my time, but I at least wanted to test to see if they're working or not. So I plugged everything in and I checked my gauges and um, they're not all working like I wanted. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For some reason, only the oil pressure is working. The oil temperature is not working. Here, that's just the time. This one is a voltage that's working fine. My RPMs, I think I just have to set how many cylinders because you can set this at like four, six, and eight. So I'll play around with that. But the temperature is the one that I really wanted to use this for. And right now it's just flashing at 392 and it's obviously not 392 degrees Fahrenheit right now because I just started it. So I don't know. Um, I don't know if uh, this thing is faulty or somehow my cable is faulty or something. But I guess I will take a pause on doing these gauges for now and work on something else. So since I'm not going to be doing the gauge harness anymore, there's one more thing I really wanted to do tonight and that's to replace the speedo cable. This is just a cheap cable that I got from Rock Auto. To be honest, I don't even remember the brand. I've had this for a really long time too, maybe like a year and a half, probably even two years, who knows, but I just never really got around to installing it. I kept the original broken cable, which goes inside of the sleeve, and you can kind of see it right there. So this end is the part that broke off right behind my gauge. So for a really long time, I couldn't tell how fast I was going or even my odometer was showing incorrect that whole time. This has been showing 6,630 for like a year and a half now too. When I bought the square back, the previous owner actually even gave me the original gauge that this car came with. This was already a replacement. I guess the first one was having issues with the actual gauge itself. So they put this in and when I got it, the cable snapped. So I'm pretty sure this gauge is still okay. It's just the cable. Okay, I got this out. So basically this tab and this tab is what you need to go back there and squeeze together and push out. And there's barely any space in there because of this bar right here. And down at the bottom, there's no space because of all the wiring on this side. So you have to stick your hand from this side and then through the back. And you should have enough space to stick your hand on this side here. And then this one towards the passenger side is the easier one to push out. But in order to get to this side, you have to unscrew the speedo cable in order for you to kind of stick your hand like this and squeeze it and then push it out. So that's out. Now I'm going to replace that cable that should just be sitting somewhere in there. Hold on, let me look for it from the bottom. Oh, this one. So. This is going to be the speedo cable right here, which you have to unscrew like that from the back. And then you like find your way through here and pinch it that way. Before I do all this work, it's always good to just double check and make sure your parts are correct. So I'm going to try it out on this gauge just like that. And then it screws in to the back. And uh, hopefully that should work. The hubcap is off and the front wheel is lifted, but before I take off the wheel, you can already see where the other end of that cable goes to. You see how that looks just like that. Oh, look at this guy. Anyways, so basically as this wheel spins, that inside cable is going to continue to spin all along the inside and send the signal over to the gauge. And that's basically how that works. So since my original one broke, I think right behind here, I think I initially thought it broke right behind the gauge or something. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and replace this. And it's super easy. You just pop off this cap, pull off that old one, put this new one in, and then put this clip in and we should be good to go. All you really need is a pick. So I'm going to use that to pull off this clip here, make sure it doesn't go flying. Then use a flat head to get this cap off. <laughs> there you go. Oh, 
Yep, that's where it broke. You can see that loosey goosey. Oops, it's slinging grease everywhere. But that is what needs to be replaced. So this should just come off like this. And then this new cable, well, I have to take off this clip too, but that will fit in just like that. And see how it's square? It's supposed to be square so that as this spins, this cable spins also. With this original cable removed, I should be able to, oh, actually, this is it right here. This is the cable that goes to the speedometer. Okay, you're gonna follow this cable all the way down to the back here. And you can see this, I think you're supposed to just pull it out. I don't see it bolted to anything, so I'm gonna just yank it out and see what I get. There we go. So now that's out, that's free. This is completely loose. So I'm gonna go back inside and yank this out. So you don't even really have to pull it up here from the dashboard. You can just literally go down here and pull this out this way. And in goes the new one. I'm gonna take off this clip first. I think it may just be dirty, but the square's not fitting there easily. So I may just have to shove it in there. There we go. Cool, now you just gotta make sure that clip is nicely seated. Once that is, shove this back in. I'm actually gonna use a mallet. Just lightly tap it in place. Since my gauge hasn't really been working and my odometer is for sure wrong, also I have no idea how many miles the square back really has, I wanna at least zero these out so I can monitor my mileage on the engine. So I'm gonna try to open this, see if I can just spin those back to zero. I actually don't even know how to open this. I think maybe, oh yeah, there it is. I think I need to open those. Man, I may just be ruining this. Or maybe not, we'll see. All right, I'm just gonna spin this to zero. Let's see, I've never done this before. This is actually really interesting how this gauge works. So basically, this is where that cable goes into and it spins it as the wheel's spinning. Then it goes to a worm drive spinning this gear. That gear will spin going into this other gear, turning that one, and then this one will turn, turning these things. So that's pretty cool. One, two, three different angles on the gears. So now I think I just have to figure out how I can remove one of these gears. Any of these gears being removed should allow me to spin these back to zero. So I need to figure out how I can do that because I don't think I can take that out. Or here, or there. Hmm. Take a look at this. I have the original broken cable connected to my power drill and then just hooked it up back to this gauge and see how fast it goes. Hmm. Oh, there. <laughs> okay, I found out how to kind of play around with this. And this brass fitting here comes off here because that holds this gear. And I used some pliers to kind of pry that out. And once this is out, you can kind of shift that gear over and then turn this one, which will turn this dial. And I'm trying to figure out a faster way to change these back to zero. I tried to move this out of the way and just turn these separately, but these don't turn without this turning. So I don't know, I may be stuck with just having to turn this thing all night. All right guys, so I figured out how to do this much faster. My power drill, I put a bunch of rubber bands on here and I'm just gonna put it right up against this and you can watch the mileage go down. There you go, I already went down 200 miles. 
that's another 200 right there. I'm just gonna keep going until it gets to zero. We now have a zero mile gauge for a somewhat zero mile engine. One thing I did notice is that I did this obviously really fast, like those 6,600 miles probably would have taken anybody like five years to do. And I just backed it out in like five minutes. So you have to make sure this is well lubricated. I had some bearing grease that I had sitting. So I made sure to apply some right there every, I don't know, a couple hundred miles, every few hundred miles, just to make sure that's not gonna like explode on me. I installed this brass fitting back in place to lock in those miles. Now I'm gonna be ready to rebuild this and reinstall it back into the car. The gauge is now reinstalled and you can see it's at zero miles. Everything's all nice and flush and I'm really liking this setup now. Um, all I have left to do is just reinstall the wheels Maybe I'll go for a drive tonight just to test to see if this even works. Here we go, guys. I'm going to go for a test drive and we're going to see if my gauge works. Huh. It's like running really weird right now. Hmm. Hold on. Take two. I totally forgot to put the linkage for the carburetors on cylinder one and two, so I was only running on two cylinders. But I have that back on now, and engine is running fine. Let's see if my gauge works. So far, I mean, I'm kind of going slow and this hasn't really gone up yet, but maybe when I pick up some speed. Looks like my speedometer's working, guys. And even though odometer's working too. So I'm just gonna go for a joyride. I think I might go get gas, but so far the engine's running really strong. I may take this out tomorrow and uh, drive it a little bit more. So we'll wait till tomorrow and see how that goes. Man, this looks so good under the light. So I just got a full tank of gas and I also filled two jerry cans full of gas in there. I think one two gallon and one one gallon. I think I'm gonna take it for a pretty long drive tomorrow. So I'm gonna try and prep for that. Okay, I'm back and I have to say it rode really well. I drove just about 10 miles. Really all I wanted to do was just get it prepared for me to be able to drive it tomorrow morning because I do need to break the engine in. And uh, I think they say to drive about, um, what, like 200 miles. So I think that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I'm gonna drive to Santa Monica or no, not Santa Monica, um, Santa Barbara. That should be just about 100 miles and uh, 100 miles back so that should give me about 200 miles and then when i get back i'm going to change the oil again and uh, i think they say to drive another a thousand miles and then change the oil again and then from there it should just be like regular intervals so i think i'm going to do like 3,000 mile oil changes on this but we'll see how that goes when i get there actually before i end this i did notice that it's kind of smoking a lot so i took a look underneath and it's just coming from the heat exchanger so nothing really too crazy i think what happened is when i did my valve adjustments i do remember spilling some oil over the heat exchangers and now that i just drove it everything is kind of like cooking on there so i don't think it's anything to worry about for now hopefully <laughs> 